We have trauma training starting this evening. So our um our brand new training, I'm all tangled, my brand new training on teaching, particularly EFT practitioners, the art and the skill of helping people through trauma. Well, I believe trauma um, has a particular skill set. It needs a very different, more gentle approach than just EFT. And if you're not skilled in how to venture your way in slower than what you normally would do, you can do quite a little bit of damage. So we have trauma training starting tonight. So if you are watching this and you are interested in being trained specifically for trauma, um, we are going to look at medical. We're going to look at, we're just going to apologize for the men who are just tapping here. Don't, don't you just get that? Um, so we're going to look at some medical stuff. We're going to look at accident injuries. We're going to look at impacts of all of that. We're going to be looking at um, some sexual abuse trauma and stuff like that towards the end of the, the course. We're going to be looking at helping people through grief and loss and touching on P PTSD or PTS as it's known. Um, yeah, there's six modules in total. Of course, this bang is just put it all completely out of my head. But we are here today. It is February. Where on earth did January go? It is the month of love. And I love February as well because it's my birthday month. Um, one of my babies was born in, in, in February as well, literally the day after Valentine's Day. So, you know, after a very romantic dinner with his father, my, um, my, my son decided to come six weeks early. So we have some fun. So this, what we're going to start off with this month is we're going to start to talk about how do I use EFT to, how do I use it to heighten love? How do I use it to deepen deepen my relationships? How do I use it to um, even attract love? Now, while you're going, so who are you, Lorna, and why are you talking about this? Remember, I wrote a book on the subject. Thank God he's gone. Down here, the important bit, The Smart Woman's Guide to Get Back Your Personal Power and Reclaim Your Confidence. It has a super sassy title, no men were harmed, beaten or berated in the writing of the book. And also, the I love that the artwork, she's a piece of artwork that lives in my house and done by the amazing, amazing Tanya LaViz from the Hunter Valley here in New South Wales. So if you love the artwork, go and get in touch with Tanya because, as I said, I love it hanging up in my house. Um, not the original, but close enough to. Thank God he's gone. This book is about personal empowerment, personal leadership, women's empowerment, and it is it plays in so well to our topic today. When we want to look at deepening any relationship, I'm a single girl as well, so I'm I'm out doing dating and I'm meeting lots of people and learning lots of things about myself. When we want to use EFT to um, clear out the blocks to attracting a new partner, or using it to enhance what we already have, whether that's the love of self that you want to enhance or deepen the relationship that you have with another person. As with all EFT, if we were to go and start doing tapping on, um, I just want to have a new boyfriend, or I just want to have a new partner, and I want everything to be wonderful, and actually just sort of tapping on the, what do I want? That's okay. If you then started tapping on the good stuff and trying to just bolster it all up and, you know, I, I love my life and I just want it to be free and I just want to attract in the right person and blah, blah, blah. That's all good and fun too. I'm guilty. I do it as well. I have my whole routine that I do in the morning of just boosting up my whole entire day. It's fun and it works. But when you want to look at deepening, deepening relationships with other people, I said whether it's a deeper with self, you want to attract a new person in, or you really want to enhance what you've got with the person you've already got in your life already, the trick with EFT is, A, to be honest with yourself, no sugarcoating it, and B, getting into the weeds, getting into the nitty-gritty of what the blocks are. Now, let's quickly talk about what happens when we're in relationship with other. I believe that we learn in the relationship, but we often well, we get to practice in the relationship, but we get to do our healing work when we're single. Not to say that you have to become single to do your healing work if you're in a lovely relationship and you don't want to leave, but often there's that time of being able to integrate it differently when when you are when you are wearing the, the single guy or girl hat for a period of time. So when we're looking at to, to enhance with other people, I'm going to suggest, as I said, get a journal. I, I love journals and I think people should write stuff down. And partly it is, it's not because I need to write, it's just because get it out of your head. Get it out of your head. Half the time, the scribble in my journal is totally illegible. 
I couldn't even go back and read it if I wanted to, because all it is about is getting the thoughts out of the head, getting the thoughts out of the head. It's not about being able to go back and read it. You don't want to go back and read it. It's not about that. It's about getting it out of your head. So if you're going to do some of this journaling work and get some stuff out because you want a better relationship with the person that you're with, you're going to need to get true, real and honest with yourself as to what the blockers are. What are you currently doing? What are you currently saying to yourself? What are the fears? What are the what are the limits? What's the stuff that's going on in your head that stops the amazing relationship? Because there has to be a block to it. Are there times where you're, and I'll use the word loosely, please don't attack, is there times when you're being the victim? Is there times when the other person does or says something and you find yourself tense, you find yourself activated or triggered, you find some feeling and sensation going through your body, yeah, all of that stuff, all of that is activations and triggers. You want to be clearing those. What is it that that person said to you today that annoyed you, bugged you, bothered, ticked you off, triggered you, whatever word you want to use? What was that that they did and they said? I don't know. Maybe they commented on your appearance. They've got no right to comment on your appearance. I agree. But if they commented on your appearance and you got really hurt and really worked up about it, what is it exactly about that statement that bothers you? Is it because you feel the person you should, that loves you should not see any of your faults? Do you think that the what the thing that they said resonates with you. It's what you already think about yourself. Is it that they're being a real shit and just saying really horrible, mean things? And is that a pattern for them that they keep doing? So maybe the trigger is, what are my boundaries because I'm allowing them to keep treating me that way? Notice how it isn't just about this, this very clear-cut thing that happened. There's always, always things underneath it. And that's where the honesty comes in. That's where I want you to be true to you. I want you to really, really get underneath things. I know for my personal transformation, when I wrote this book, when I wrote the book, it was the most cathartic journey I had ever been on, I think, because what I got to do was I got to face so many of my demons. I got to really look at my patterns of where I was playing the victim, where he did and she did and they did and all the other things that, you know, we all go on about we, when, when a relationship breaks down. And it took me a long time to get past that. But it took me a lot of honesty as well. So when you're doing tapping, you're going to want to get in underneath. Where was I a victim? There were times when I blamed him. It wasn't him. It was me or I was equally as bad, or I was equally as judging, or I was, I was equally as attacking. It wasn't all him. And I had to be honest with myself to heal all of that. There were some things that I did that I am far from proud of, but I did them. There is no point berating myself over the fact that I did it. I did it. End of. But it does mean I don't need to repeat it. I don't need to do it again. Yeah? So be honest with yourself. Focus on all of that. Go and look at what's underneath the the impacts of what the person did, what the person said, because usually in relationship with others, it's about what they did, said, et cetera, um, or didn't do, say, et cetera. But, so get in underneath it. What's it honestly, truly, what's the honest, true feeling or sensation or what it is about that? Now, let's flip to the other side. When you're wanting to be in relationship and you are not, I guess I get that is me. Um, I, I have dated fairly infrequently. It's a bit of a personal stuff. Dated fairly infrequently over the last, um, gosh, I've been nearly a decade, probably nine years that I've been single. And I have done a lot of work on myself in that time because I'm very particular of um, the relationship that I would like to be in next. I certainly don't want to just be in a crappy old relationship for the sake of it. I'm not prepared to put up with, with, with stuff um, when people don't behave in a way that helps me to be happy, not makes me happy, but helps me to be happy. If they have got behaviours or or things that in their lifestyle really, really doesn't align with my lifestyle, I'm okay to walk away. In the past, I would have stayed. 
and I would have got angry and I would have got resentful and I would have got annoyed at them for not being who I needed and wanted them to be. Yeah, I think we're all being very guilty of that. I needed to let that go. They are them. They get to be who they want to be. We don't get to stick around and be angry at them for not being who or what we want them to be. But I needed to get honest with that. I needed to get underneath that. So if you're a single person, you're looking for love and you want to deepen those relationships or attract someone better in, you've got to get into your own stuff. You've got to look at what's blocking you. Is there a part of you? Because I know it's rageous. I remember saying to my brother-in-law, oh, yeah, I want my lovely man to come, blah, 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 and I can't wait for him to turn up in this lovely life. And he goes, I don't think you do. He said, I really think you enjoy your nomadic lifestyle. I'm pretty sure, Lorna, you enjoy being able to disappear up north to Queensland for four weeks to do a house sit and be able to go down to Melbourne to see one of my kids and, and I go to spend time at their house and I, I house sit. And I, I just, I come and go. I really have a, a great lifestyle. And he was really interested to go, yeah, but I don't think you want a partner. His interpretation of partner was someone that was going to live with me. I have no intentions of someone coming to live with me. I have a very different view of what a relationship looks like. So that's also worth exploring too. What does relationship mean to you? What is in your intentions of meeting a new person? You may say, look, I'd really, really love a, a new partner in my life, but I don't want to live with them. Be honest with yourself and, and know that that's okay. In this day and age, we can form our relationships to be whatever we want them to be. I don't need to follow um, anything that's conforming to the norm, nothing at all. They just need to make you happy. So look at those. If they're if you're not attracting the person in anything, there are some blocks. Look at what the blocks are. Look at your honest, true feelings. Is there a feeling of um, of, of terror and, and tremor that goes through your body? Is it just a sensation that goes through your body? Is there a real, oh God, I love my single life. I love the freedom of being able to come and go. If I have a partner, that will equal control because I know that was me because my past relationship was very controlling. If I, it, the other person used to say, oh, I never stop you doing what you want to do. But the end of the sentence was, but man, am I going to make it hard for you when you come home because you've annoyed me because you've gone and done what you wanted to do. That was the end part of it. That was the tail end that I had to put up with. So for me, I had to work on the fact that relationships did, they equal trapped. So get in underneath them and figure out what they mean to you. A relationship equals, a relationship means, what does it mean about me personally? What does it mean about me um, as, a, as a collective, as part of the, the, the collective? Think of it like that. Same if you're already in a relationship as well, you can do the same. What is it about this relationship that I love? What is it about this relationship that I'm not so fond of? What are the things that I would like to change? Um, if, if I had the opportunity to change them, what are they? And look at those. So what are they? What are those triggers for me? If I don't like the way he speaks to me or she speaks to me, how would I like to be spoken to? And if I'd like to be spoken to differently, am I speaking to myself in that manner? Or am I speaking to myself as equally detrimental and derogatory as they do? Remember, this is an energy space. It comes and goes. It's a mirror and a reflection. And this is where your honesty with EFT comes from. There is no point tapping on, I bring me my new lover until you're happy to clear out the gunk that's stopping the quality man or woman that you want to come along from coming along. So again, if you would love my book, so here is a copy of my book again. Thank God he's gone. The Smart Woman's Guide, Smart Woman's Guide to Get Back Your Personal Power and Reclaim Your Confidence. Personal development book for women, personal leadership book for women. I have some of them here at my home. Um, I'm going to invite you, if you would like a signed copy of the book, you pay for the book. I will pay for the postage. The book is only $20 Australian. You pay for the book. I will pay for the postage. I will sign it if you would like to. I will send it to wherever you are in the world if you'd like a copy of my book. Um, Leslie's also going to put, because my gorgeous Leslie's on the line, she's going to put a link to the trauma course that we have starting tonight, 7 o'clock Sydney time. It is all recorded. It will run for six weeks on a Thursday evening. Um, the recordings will go into a library that you'll have access to. So if you'd like to join us for trauma training, please do so. If you don't want a physical copy of the book, but you want to get it on Amazon or Audible, because it's an Audible book and an Amazon um, printed book, please do so. It's wonderful always to see the, um, the, the royalties come in every month, which shows me that people are still buying my book, which is beautiful. 
I will be back here next Thursday and we will have time to chat then. Wishing everybody much love. If you have questions, you know where to pop them into the group. Send us a direct message, whatever it needs to take. We will answer your questions for you. Beautiful month of love and I will see you all again very, very soon.